Oh, love of God. Hallelujah. So thankful to be uh, with you here again uh, today. Thankful for you, whatever time of day you may be tuning in. So, so grateful that we can do a little Bible study together. Uh, and as the Lord leads, uh, let him show us his words. Let him show us his love for us. You know, the reality is these, uh, this right here, these are his love letters to us. From Genesis to Revelation, thank the Lord, the scarlet thread that flows through his word. These are his love letters to us. These are his, uh, his heart, his mind, his words that show us how much he loves us, how much he cares for us. Uh, I'll just interject this here, you know, uh, a good father, a loving father doesn't uh, spoil his children, doesn't spoil or just give his children everything they want. But a, a good father will chastise his children as they need it and as, they, as uh, he knows that they need it. That is a good, good father. And we have a good, good father. But I'm thankful as, as the father does chasten us. Uh, he takes us out to the woodshed on occasion. But good news is, is that he brings us back into the house. He doesn't leave us in the woodshed. He brings us back in and lets us sit at the table table and feast one more time. Uh, praise God for that. I know we left off last time in uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verses 7 through 11. We picked up uh, 1 John 4 at 1 John 4 and verse 18. And that's where we're going to go ahead and start today. 1 John 4 and verse 18. John the beloved, John the disciple that Jesus loved, John the part of the a part of the inner circle of Peter, James, and John, out of all twelve of Jesus' disciples and many, many more in reality, John was the one that was the closest to him. He was the one that got in just a little bit closer. I, I praise God. I want to be like John. I want to be like Mary. I pray that you want to be like John. That you want to be like Mary. That you want to lead against his chest and hear his heartbeat, that you want to come and just sit at his feet, that he would find us sitting at his feet, hearing his word, just letting him love upon us and, and we loving upon him as he loves us. You know, the reality is we couldn't love him unless he loved us first. He's always the initiator. He's always the one uh, who has his hand reaching down, way, way down to where we are so he can pick us up. But he's always the one uh, who invites first and foremost. He, his invitation has been extended so that we can come and respond to that invitation to come and praise God for that. But first John verse, uh, chapter four, excuse me, in verse 18 says here, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. That's the only way that we can love him. The only way that we can know uh, how to love one another, how to love the Father is because he first loved us. Let's pray today. Father, thank you so, so much for the privilege and the opportunity to break open your word, Lord, to sit at your table, Father, and eat with you. Lord, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for the sheer privilege of, of being able to come confidently into your presence, Lord, knowing that you love us with an everlasting love. Lord, I thank you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and we are in you today. So we get to come, Lord. We get to make our petitions known. We get to ask. We get to seek. We get to knock, knowing that we will receive all those good things that you have in store for us and that you have prepared for us according to your will. Lord, we thank you for that. Let us come and just sit at your feet today, Lord, to hear your word and to know you just a little bit more than we did before. And we thank you for that in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. And amen. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Man, I got to just take you back to Genesis chapter three uh, here. First of all, Genesis chapter three, and verse 10, I believe, is where we're going to start. Genesis chapter 3, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, and this actually, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is the first time that fear is mentioned in the Word of God. This is the first time that that fear is mentioned in the in the Word of God. And let's read it here. Speaking. Well, let's back up a minute. Verse 8, we'll start there. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Where are you? And verse 10, So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That is the, this is the principle of first mention, uh, it's called, but it's the first time that fear is ever mentioned in the Word of God. And you know, I, I don't want to jump ahead of myself too much, but it has to break the heart of God. Has to break the heart of God. That the, the first time that, that fear is mentioned, it's in reference to His most prized creation being afraid of Him being afraid of their maker. It's such, a, it's such a plight of humanity today. So many are afraid to come to the one that loves them the most, the one who knows them best and loves them the most, but they're afraid to come to him. They're afraid for, for probably many and varied reasons, but ultimately the only way that their sin can be removed is by coming to him. The only way that their sin can be uh, taken away, annihilated, removed completely is by coming to the one who loves them the most and knows them the best. The one who, who having all these, uh, having made all of creation in these six days, but Adam and Eve being the most prized of all of his creation, out of all of the most, uh, most beautiful and majestic of his creation, he loved them the most. They were his most prized creation and now they find themselves in fear. Fear of coming into the presence of God. The Lord knew what was going to happen. The Lord always knew what was going to happen. Before, uh, before the world ever was, Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. God made a way for relationship that was severed and broken in the garden to be restored through Christ. And he had already uh, done that. That had already been in the heart and mind of God. But he asks Adam here in verse, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse uh, 8, he asks them, uh, excuse me, verse 9, where are you? Where are you? In, t in today's vernacular, in today's terminology, we might uh, send somebody a text and say, W-I-A, where are you at? God's asking many today, where are you? Where are you at? Where are you at? He wants restored relationship. He sent his son out of his great love for us to, to restore the relationship, again, that was severed in the garden, that was broken. They used to walk with him and talk with him. In the cool of the day, Adam would be in the very presence of God. Eve would be in the very presence of God. They knew what the presence of God was. And they participated uh, with the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God told them, don't, don't eat that. Don't, you can eat everything else in the garden, but don't do that. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because he knew that it was best for them. Not, not that he was keeping something from them. He knew that it was best for them not to participate in eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Nevertheless, the, the serpent came and we, we uh, you can go ahead and read it back in Genesis the first few chapters here about how the enemy came to Eve and then Eve came to Adam and the, the deception that took place. Though Adam just essentially disobeyed God 
and he participated in eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and his eyes were open and they knew that they were naked as soon as they did that. They went ahead and sewed some fig leaves together, which is indicative of man's uh, efforts to cover his own sin, to cover her own sin, to cover our own sin. We, we make every effort to do that so that we don't have to come to the one who knows us best and loves us most. But the reality is there's no amount of self-effort that can take away our sin. Zero. No amount of self-effort. We could, we could uh, give our bodies to be burned. We could do all the things that we would think are going to accomplish a right relationship with God. But the word tells us that the only way that we can come to the Father is through the Son. And I'm so grateful that God took a lamb or took a, an animal, slain the, slayed the animal, and made coats of skin for, for to cover Adam and Eve, to, to clothe them with coats of skin, indicating bloodshed, which is really a type of Calvary, a type of what Jesus Christ would do at the cross thousands of years later. I'm so, so thankful he, that he did it. So grateful that he did it. He did it for them. He clothed them with these coats of skin, again, indicating bloodshed, so that he could be with them, so that he could uh, have relationship with us. Jesus died 2,000 years ago so that we could have relationship with him, that we could have restored relationship with the Father through what Christ would do. But again, this is the first mention here of fear in the Bible. And sadly and unfortunately, there's several, uh, probably hundreds of more mentions of fear in the Word of God. That was never God's intent. It was never God's intention for His creation to live in fear. It was never His, uh, never His intention, never His desire for His most prized creation to, to, to be afraid of Him, to be afraid to come to Him. Adam and Eve, they heard Him. It says here, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in, in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. It was never God's desire, never His intention for us to hide from His presence, for us to, to hide from Him, to cower from Him, because we know that we're naked, because we know that we have sin. It's His desire and it's his delight for us to come to him. It's his design for us to come to him so that he can take away all of our sin, so that he can completely remove all of our sin. I'm so thankful that Jesus is the lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the world. He is the lamb of God, one and done. That's all it took. Jesus came, laid down his life so that that we don't have to go to Jerusalem and find a spotless lamb, spotless on the inside, spotless on the outside. Go to a priest and have the, the lamb's uh, throat slit, slit and have the blood poured out into a basin. Then have that blood from the basin poured onto the altar so that it could cover temporarily our sin. Jesus took away our sin once and for all. Hallelujah. When he cried out, it is finished, he meant it is finished. The work is done. Hallelujah. The blood has been slain once and for all. Hallelujah. The lamb has been slain once and for all. The blood has been shed once and for all. And our faith in that blood, our faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done, allows us access into the presence of God. Hallelujah. We can come into the Holy of Holies no matter what time of day it is, no matter what time of night, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you can enter into the presence of God. Hallelujah. You say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus and whatever's on your heart, you can talk to him about. If you don't have words, you can just sit in his presence. You can just lay in his presence. You can just be with him. Hallelujah. And he will cast out all fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. He will take away all fear. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. If you're struggling with fear today, if you're struggling with fear of, of anything, of any nature, 
You can come to the Father. And he said he will cast out fear. He will take away that fear. It's his perfect love. Not our perfect love. It's his perfect love that will take away fear. Because fear involves torment, it says back here in 1 John, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse 18. Because fear involves torment. It's not God's desire. It's not his design for us to live in fear. It's not his design for our minds to, to be tormented in anguish with thoughts and feelings and emotions that are not from the Lord, that are not from God. He took that crown of thorns for our, for our mental anguish. He took the crown of thorns for those thoughts that are, that are, are not from Him, for that fear that torments you. Maybe day and night, and the Lord wants to alleviate, wants to relieve you of that fear, wants to take it away completely and totally. He is not the one that gave it to you. He's not the author of fear. Uh, first, excuse me, Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 here says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. He has given you a sound mind. He has given you love and he has given you uh, power. Thank the Lord for that. He didn't give it to you. He's not the author of fear. He's not the author of confusion. And he wants you to know today that he broke that power at Calvary 2,000 years ago, that you can walk in in his love, that you can walk in the confidence that his love brings. You can walk with your head held high. Hallelujah. No longer looking down, no longer in torment, no longer in, in fear, no longer with thoughts from the enemy that uh, are fiery darts many times that plague our minds. Jesus, again, took that crown of thorns so, so that it can be completely removed and completely taken away. Does that mean you're going to walk in perfection from here forward? I would love to believe that, but uh, God's word tells us different. It tells us that in this world we will have tribulation, but that we can be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, finish up here for today, but we will pick up next time. I'm believing the Lord just wants to extend this. Uh, what I thought would be a three-part series may become a 30-part series, maybe even a 300-part series. Hallelujah. Don't run away uh, because we've said that. We love you so, so much. We'll pick up next time more on the love of God. What love he has for us. What love the Father has bestowed upon us that we would be called the children of God. Even while we were yet sinners, He loved us. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. How much more now that we are His children and He calls us His friend. Hallelujah. We love you today. Never as much as He loves you. And thank you so, so much for watching. We'll see you next time in Jesus.